Let's look at an example from the field of neuroscience, which is adapted from the book MATLAB for Neuroscientists, an introduction to scientific computing in MATLAB. You can find a full text version of the book to read online via the UCL Library catalogue. The dataset for the example is the firing times, in seconds, of a single neuron in the motor cortex during a behavioural task which involves moving the hand from the same starting position to the same ending position. We want to establish whether the neuron is involved in this type of motor activity. I've opened up the data in Excel to have a look at. We can see that there were 47 trials for the experiment. That is, the experiment was repeated 47 times, and each time the neuron fired, a timestamp was recorded. The reported times are centred so that the start of movement coincides with a timestamp of 0 seconds, and data up to 1 second either side of the start of movement are given. So these cells here indicate that in trial 1, the neuron fired 989 milliseconds before movement started, and then again 940 milliseconds before movement started. The number of times that the neuron fired within the time range is different within each trial. So the number of values in each column is not the same. That means that in MATLAB we wouldn't be able to store them in a numeric array. I've taken the results from the first trial and stored them in the variable named spike1 in MATLAB. Let's plot a time histogram of the data showing how often the neuron fired in each 100 millisecond interval. I don't need to count them all by hand. I can get MATLAB to do it by using the histoc function, which stands for histogram count. The first argument is the data set and the second argument defines the lower class limits. For this example, I'll define the lower class limits as the vector from minus 1 to 1 in steps of 0.1. Notice that the step size does properly divide the interval, and that the number of counted items in the last bin will be 0, since there are no data values greater than 1 in our set. It's important that we do include this zero-valued category because it's possible to construct histograms with varying class widths, so the upper limit of the last non-empty class is required. We can see here that the neuron fired most frequently near the onset of movement. Let's plot the histogram, which is done by using the bar function. The arguments that we require are the lower class limits, the frequency counts in each bin, and a third argument which defines the type of plot that we'd like to produce we need to use the histoc plot type. The histogram provides a visual indication that the neuron was most active near to the onset of movement in trial 1, around the 0 seconds timestamp. Notice that a zero frequency bar has been plotted here. We can set the x-axis limits in the figure property editor to remove this unwanted white space. First, however, what we should do is average the bin counts over 47 trials to get an overall result for the dataset. You'll need to learn a bit more in MATLAB before you can accomplish such a task, but I've provided the results for you here, in the variable overall. Let's plot the histogram for this data. We can see that the firing rate begins to increase about half a second before the onset of movement. 
and returns to baseline about half a second after movement starts. To obtain the average frequencies across all trials, we need to divide the frequency by the number of trials. And to obtain a firing rate in number of times per second, we need to divide again by the class widths, which are all equal here. Let's set the axis limit. And add some labels. It's very important to be clear about what is shown on the vertical axis of a histogram. When we divide by the class width, as we did here, this is known as the frequency density. In that case, the total area of each bar gives the frequency within that class. If we had instead divided by the total frequency across all trials, then we would give the relative frequency on this axis, basically a measure of the frequency percentage within each class. If we divide by both class width and total frequency, then we obtain the relative frequency density, which is basically a discretization of a probability distribution.